These are just two of many three and a half inch drones in my fleet, and although they appear identical, they're vastly different. The one on my left here is an analog drone, while the one on my right is equipped with a DJI Vista unit. And time and time again, I keep gravitating towards the analog version for one reason and one reason only. This one here is equipped with a Betaflight OSD support. Well, that's until now. The guys at FPV WTF have released a new firmware for both our air units and our goggles, allowing us to have OSD elements in our goggles. So let's go to the computer, flash our device with this new firmware and see if it works. Okay, so we're here at the computer and we have our goggles, our DJI goggles. I'm using the DJI goggles V2. This can also work with the DJI goggles V1 as well. We have to flash both the Vista and the goggles. So we're gonna do the goggles first and work our way to the actual Vista. Some things to know here, which is really important. Make sure that you have a fully charged battery for your goggles as well as your drone. You do not wanna start this process and have the battery die midway and that could potentially break both your goggles and your drone as well. So make sure your batteries are very charged. Now besides the batteries, you wanna have proper ventilation, especially for the air unit. These things get hot really, really fast. So I have a fan here, so once we power up the drone, we can keep the VTX cool as well. So the first thing here is to make sure that we are on the proper firmware for flashing. Now you wanna make sure that you're on the 01000606 firmware for your goggles and that's in the DIY mode. There's also an FPV mode and that can be used for the DJI drone or the Avada. As I said before, you wanna have that up to date. Now, if you are beyond that, there is a possibility you can revert back to the older firmware, or if you're on the older firmware, you can upgrade to that firmware number. Now, in certain cases, if you have bought your goggles with say the Avada or a DJI FPV drone, it might be impossible to revert back to that firmware number. And this feature or hack is not gonna be available to you, unfortunately, at this time. Now, fortunately for me, when I did get these goggles and I did unbox them, I did an unboxing video, I did flash these to the actual correct firmware. Now, all this information is on the GitHub page. I'll leave that link below. And you can see it right here. You have the FPV WTF GitHub page, and you can see all the information pertaining to what you need to do here and all the information for this. Now, Maztec have done a really good job showing you all the firmware that's compatible with this hack and the WTF operating system. I'll leave the picture linked on the screen here so you can take a look at it and see if your device is compatible with this. Now, once you have the correct firmware on your goggles and your air unit, it's as simple as going to the FPV WTF website, which I have right here. And you can see this page right here. Now, this is not an app. This is a web-based application, a web page where you can flash your Vista. Now to make all this Betaflight OST system work on this system, there's pretty much three steps. The first thing we're gonna do is to root your goggles, which you can see right here. We're gonna root first. The second thing is we're gonna download and install the WTF operating system onto the goggles. And then the last thing, we're gonna put some packets or applications to run on the WTF OS system to make sure this all works. So we're just gonna power on my goggles here. My battery here is pretty much charged. Now we're good to go. We are in the DIY mode, which is for these air units for our FPV drones. We're just gonna plug this in here and see if it finds it. All right, let's go to root right here. Hit root. And this is really important, guys. These guys are providing a service for us for free, guys. We asked for this for a long time from DJI and we did not have it. So this is a really good way to support these guys and they've done a really good job. Now, I've already paid and supported these guys, so you can either donate whatever you want here or a reoccurring monthly donation. I've already done that. So let's go here and let's root the device. All right, so here's my COM port right here, COM port four. We're gonna connect, oops, select and connect. Attempting step one. So it's about to do it. And let's see what happens here. So this might take between you know, one and five minutes. Step one, success, rebooting. It rebooted it. Still open, it's not over there. Success, step three. All right. Step three failed, power cycle your device now. I'm gonna power cycle that off. Step one and two was a success. Step three is where it's having some difficulty. Very interesting. Okay, step three was a success. Step four, all right, step four success. 
All right, so that took a while for me here. We're looking at five minutes on some of these timestamps here, but this thing had to recycle a few times, but it said it was success. And you can see right here, all done. Your device has been successfully rooted. Yep, all right. So now you should install the WTFOS, which we're gonna do, which is right here. Click on that. We're gonna install, install. I think that was successful. Let's see what's going on here. And the last thing here is to download the appropriate packets or you know apps to this goggle. So let's see what we have available here on the list. It's gonna fetch all the packets or packages and see what we wanna install. Uh, FCC unlock, okay? So I did not do this hack on my goggles or air unit. So I think I wanna do that. That would be pretty cool. So let's install that, see how that goes. All right, that was easy. <laughs> that was pretty quick. Here's the real kicker here. This is the big one here. Most people want this. This is MSP OSD service for the DJI HD FPV goggles. And that's cool. Let's install that. Wow, and we have it installed, guys. We know it works because now I can see the text at the bottom. It says OSD waiting. All right, we do the same thing now for the actual air unit or Vista in your drone. So we're gonna power up this drone. Same USB cable, we're gonna plug it to the air unit. Let's root this puppy. Same process, COM5, connect. All right, that's probably how it should have been for the goggles, it took a little bit longer. This one here took a minute and 47 seconds. All done, your device has been successfully rooted. All right, we are officially rooted. Let's do the WTF operating system. All right, install it and let's do it. All right, so while we're waiting here, I just wanna give one more shout out to these guys. Uh, do wanna thank the FPV WTF guys. Uh, if you do use this, I, I do hope that you guys support these guys. This is a free you know, software or firmware to hack your goggles. And as I said before, yes, if you're gonna upgrade to the O3 air unit, some of these features might be lost but you still have the goggles rooted in the background. So that's a really good thing. Um, and that might be a thing we can use in the future to get more features or support for these goggles. We have the root. Now we can add the packages. So let's do that. And we're gonna go for the first one, which is the MSP, which is pretty cool. All right, that was pretty quick. Let's install this FCC hack. That's gonna be good for that in case I wanna fly long range. So that's cool. And it was quick as that, that's done. So we've successfully flashed the goggles and our air unit. Now, if you have other drones with air units or Vistas, this would be the time to flash it or root it and then flash it with the WTF uh, operating system. But for right now, you wanna do that process for all the Vistas or all your DJI drones. Okay, so this is now complete. We have one more step and that has to do with beta flight. So we're gonna connect here and I'm gonna go to the porch tab. And the first thing I wanna do is make sure that I see where the air unit is connected to. So I can see right here, it's connected to UART2 and that's gonna be very crucial because we're gonna be using this number right here to configure this whole thing. Let's just go to our CLI tab. You wanna type set OSD underscore display port underscore device equal MSP. So let's try that right here. And it should auto fill for us because this is, this is a new system here. Display, let's see here, display. Display port device, that's right here. Boom, and then equals, and you have your choices right here. You want MSP because we have this connected to the MSP port. That's how you're gonna get the text or information from the flight controller to the VTX. Hit enter, boom, that's good. And now that that's done, you wanna choose the port. We know that we use UART2, so we have to keep that into consideration when we're doing this one here. So it's also set display port, set display port underscore MSP underscore serial. You just select that instead of typing it. And then equals, all right, so here's the range right here. Now we gotta put the number right here. And as you can see, it goes from minus one to 30. Now the way this is working, whatever port that we saw, we saw it was port number two, you subtract one from whatever port is that Vista connected to. So in my case, it was two, I subtract one, that would be port one equals one, hit enter, and it took it, and then I have to save it, S-A-V-E, 
boom. All right, I think we're good. Let's save this bad boy, save. We're done guys, we're done. This technically should work and I'm curious to see if it works. We're gonna put a battery in here, power it up. Let's power up this first. Do that. And let's see the moment truth is here. Oh gosh, take these glasses off. Come on, come on, come on. All right, okay, Whew, that took a while. Everything is surprisingly in the right spot. So there it is. So there it is. You can see all the OSD elements. Everything is in there, guys. That's pretty cool. Battery not full, less than full. X935. What, <laughs> what more could you want, guys? There is proof right there that it works. We have OSD on our DJI goggles. The only thing is that we can't record that but there's a little hack to get around that and I will be doing that in the next video, guys. So if you enjoyed this video, if this was helpful for you guys, please hit that like button. I'll be doing some other videos on this as well as updating this to both record OSD elements as well as upgrading this to work with the new DJI O3 air unit, guys. So if you wanna see those videos, hit that subscribe button there for you to be notified whenever I do drop those videos. So thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace.